Uh, hi everyone, Often Bat Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Queens of the Stone Age record, In Times New Roman. Josh Homme and the boys are back, brand new LP from veteran hard and alt-rock outfit Queens of the Stone Age, this is their seventh, I believe, and it's one that I had a lot of high hopes for, considering that their last project villains six years ago uh, was a bit of a drop off in quality however that's not something i hold against the band too much as uh, the album that preceded it was like clockwork and that in my opinion is one of the best rock records of the 2010s uh, most albums that would follow that would probably just seem okay in comparison as that record was so raw and well written but also very ornately orchestrated at points the record was really like an intricate house of cards but the uh, cards were razor blades and the razor blades were on fire for some reason villains though by comparison just came across much more gray not as ornate either it was just tough to dig as much entertainment out of it and i was hoping in contrast in times new roman would bring a bit more oomph uh, some more color some more vibrance however it was kind of hard to tell if we were going to be in for that uh, given the teaser tracks to this thing as the most defining characteristics of uh, singles like carnivore as well as emotion sickness were just how loose and noisy and odd they were which had me maybe anticipating a record that would be kind of wild and out of control in the vein of like an era vulgaris however after having listened to this thing that is most definitely not the record that we got because while in time New Roman does have a similarly messy demeanor. Uh, it's not nearly as aggressive or chaotic, leaving the vibe of this record feeling a lot more like a, a cool leather jacket uncle, kind of drunk, dancing around, lampshade on his head, with lots of very woozy riffs and grooves, also some brash lyrics about the depraved and doomed society that we live in on the intro track. Some of the singing on this song as well is delivered in this like knowingly silly falsetto, fuck me stupid, epic touches of strings contrast pretty harshly uh, with these very overblown guitar mixes that crash like heavy machinery. For me, this thing is definitely more interesting than villains off the bat, because the band going off the rails a little bit I think is uh, kind of a good thing. However, as I listened to this record more and more, I wasn't entirely sold on uh, what was being done here. The more slovenly approach the band takes on this record leaves a handful of songs feeling too slow, clunky, uh, messy and careless in a very unflattering way, like on Negative Space or the song Made to Parade, which is maybe too zany for its own good. There's kind of an unserious ghoulishness about it uh, that sounds like something out of Marilyn Manson's mechanical animals era. Seriously annoying. Even if I think the harmonious builds of guitar toward the end of the track are pretty cool. And to go back to Carnivore, uh, this track easily has the most lazy and uninteresting chorus on the entire LP. The transition into it does absolutely nothing. The more I hear it, the less it hits. And again, I know the band is trying to play it a little looser this time around, but I feel like you can do that without making it sound like the drummer's being made to play at gunpoint. All that being said though, uh, there's nothing on the record that sticks out as truly, truly, truly awful. Really just moments I think there could have been some adjustments made, uh, tracks I wanted more out of. And at the very least, there are uh, some decent highlights to balance out the middling cuts, whether that be Paper Machete, which has some undeniably sick and catchy garage riffs. Hami's wailing lead vocals are on point too. Uh, this is handily one of the catchiest singles the band has released in quite a long time. There's there's also Time and Place, which is a real romper. I imagine this track going over very well in a biker bar where everyone's wigged out on LSD. There's eerie lead vocals and animated lead guitars all over this track, as well as a steady riff that locks you in from beginning to end. I was surprised by what the peepholes say as well, which in a lot of respects is kind of like your average uh, Queens of the Stone Age Rager, but if you could splash in some new wave elements and have it work perfectly. And then finally, there's Emotion Sickness, which I thought was the best single of the bunch uh, on this album cycle. It's got a lot of crazy guitar leads that uh, layer up in a very sour and chaotic way, some octave riffs that are very jumpy and kind of remind me of like My Sharona, something like that. The densely layered and harmonious hard rock hook on this track is fantastic too. But beyond that, what we're mostly left with is the closer, which is a bit of a surprise as it's nine minutes long, kind of expansive for a Queens of the Stone Age song, 
And while I appreciate the band is really going for it, at the end of the day, the song really just kind of sounds like if ZZ Top uh, were playing at the goth club with some big string sections popping in here and there. Not to mention all the purposefully messy and weird production across this record isn't super appealing for long spans of time. So as a result, this track doesn't really convey the dynamics or nuance you might want out of a song this long. Though I guess it is cool that some of the opening musical themes came back uh, via this little string section passage at the very end. Overall, I thought this Queens of the Stone Age record was decent, passable, not the blowout or leapfrog over villains in terms of quality that I was hoping for. Though it does feel like, at least on the production end, the band is being a, a little bit weirder and trying to take a risk, but there are quite a few songs in the track list here where I feel like uh, that didn't really pan out. Still, I think it does say something that the band has been at it this long and has yet to uh, drop a truly garbage album, because even in its most unpalatable moments, at least uh, in Times New Roman was interesting. I'm feeling a decent two strong six on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Queens of the Stone Age, the forever.